All right, God bless you guys for joining me here. It's coming to you a little late this afternoon, uh, this evening, or to new day here at HNLC Studios. Um, sometimes we get caught on other lines with other information, but we yet still uh, bring forth that what we're supposed to do on these particular nights when we're supposed to do it. Now, most of you get a chance to catch this service right around about now. Uh, you can catch it again in its entirety, you know, 24 hours a day. All you have to do is tune in. Uh, you're always going to see a work that's coming from the kingdom of God here at HNOC Studios. Uh, look at my beautiful wife, Pastor Patty Ellis. Uh, we're just going to get ourselves in position here uh, to hear what the Word of God is speaking to us, as always. We're going to be in the book of Romans, uh, chapter 7. And we're going to be dealing with some of the things post- the Apostle Paul had to deal with uh, during the course of time of his conversion. And everything Paul deal with, uh, dealt with, we had to deal with as well. And uh, it's the process of us coming to know and understand that now there's a letter of a law in place. But through the law, we have died, but in the spirit, we must live. So Paul gets into a conversation here over in the book of uh, Romans chapter 7 about such that what it is. And so we're going to get ourselves in position here in just a little bit. We're going to open up with prayer. Thank you guys for joining us. I know we're kind of ringing in your ears a little late this afternoon, or this evening, or this night, or this morning here at HNLC Studios. Uh, we thank you guys for whoever's up with us uh, for being with us. As I said before, don't want to try redundant. You can catch this service once again in its entirety, uh, 24 hours a day, any day of the week. You just go to our speaker station. And you hear what the word of God is speaking that's coming from the kingdom of God. Father, God bless you. We thank you. We honor you as we go forth with this word. Let it be a word that will spirit the hearts of every man, woman, and boy, and child. That even in the midst of the days we're going through conflicts and changes, Father God, we will still know that you are in control as we move forth in this life that you have given us. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray, Lord. Amen. Let's take a quick look at the Word of God over here in the, the book of Romans, chapter 7. And we're going to bring some things to uh, fruition here, hopefully, over in the uh, sixth verse. We're going to start it there. And the Word of God speaks over here. So the Apostle Paul rattles off here a little bit. He says, But now we are delivered from the law. Now, notice what he's saying. But now we are delivered from the law. They've been dead wherein we were de- we were held. Now, there was things that said we could, couldn't do, and it was held accountable by a law of ordinance that was put in place. We talk about the process in the book of Colossians, and you look at the book of Colossians, it talks about the process of being buried with Christ. And now that we've been buried with Christ, we're also raised with him. And when we raised with him, we raised us to a newness and a new, not only a newness, but a new standard in life that we no longer walk to the rules of what men say, but what the Holy Spirit has given us. Now, I'm not saying that we got to disobey the laws of the land, but according to our spiritual birth and walk rights, we got to realize what it says in the book of Colossians chapter two, bear up with him in baptism. I mean, the old things that we used to do are washed away. That was our Ephesians. You know, chapter 2, when we're walking in that course. And he says the process in this half of here, wherein we also are raised with him through faith by the operations of God. Now, the operating of God is how we understand and realize the model prayer. The Father who in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We take about the process of dealing with John 13, 34. We want to... We don't want to uh, put the area of uh, Psalms 1 in it also because it tames and walks us to the laws of where we should receive uh, the proper respect uh, for our brother and sister, that we don't walk to the evil deeds and thoughts and things that we used to walk to when we was in the world. So the Word of God says once again over in Colossians chapter 2, we're buried with Christ in baptism. Also, we're raised with him through the faith and the operations of our Lord uh, operations of God, who we have raised from the dead. Now, the Word of God, he brings the book of Ephesians into fruition, but brings a little bit more clarity and light to this. As the book of Ephesians said, it was not trespassing sins and past times walked the course of the world. But Paul brings in a different direction, pretty much the same thing over in Colossians chapter 2 and 13, where we've been dead in our sins and our circumcision of our flesh. He quickened us together. And then with him, having forgiven us for all trespasses, notice what he says, 
the Masonic law was in place just as the law is in place here. So the law holds us accountable to things that what has been ordained in place to keep the order of this particular land in place that we won't go out slaughtering, stealing, or doing whatever we need to do, uh, we may think we can do, uh, that kind of opposes uh, the word of God, which really the laws help us to really walk in unity with one another, that we don't walk outside uh, in such a way that we're disrespectful to the creation that God has put in place. So when God puts something in place, He's going to put a covenant among it, and he's going to expect us to be able to follow the rules in place. But when we talk about the process in Colossians, the old things, once we are forgiven for our old sins, once the word of God speaks to us in the first, uh, second Corinthians 5 and 17, you know, any man being Christ, a new creature, all old things have passed away. When it comes to a confession, we got to confess first. Romans 10, 8, 9, which says out the word of God near thee in our mouth and in our heart. So what the word of God says, my old lifestyle, and which the devil tends to hold on to, Christ says in this word to Paul's letter to the Colossians, in the book of Colossians 2 and 14, he said, blotting out the handwriting. Now that was the, the enemy's ordinance, is to hold you accountable for the things you may have did under the law of the land, and that yet at the same time can be forgiven by God, but at the same time the law holds you accountable to the um to penalties that uh according to the law that you are broke in the land. Now now he said that was an ordinance which is against us, you know, which was contrary. Now we look at the book of Ephesians, all of us had something according to the book of Ephesians that we didn't quite measure up with the way Christ wanted us to be. But we go back over to the book of Romans, chapter 7. We want to look closely at this, and we want to understand this. But now we are delivered from the law. As I talked about, the law of the land, the things that man has ordained to put in position, um, that held us and keep us in position, that we won't uh, continue to go out and do something crazy to one another or disobey the rules and regulations that we must govern and live by in order to be living peacefully. He said, but being dead wherein we were dead, we were held, we were held by those particular laws, those ordinances, not saying they was bad, but they kept ordinance and organized, and organized in our cities and our life, that we should serve in the newness of the spirit. Now, the law we have to obey, but at the same time, we obey all the commands and the statutes of the kingdom of God as well. We'll find ourselves walking in the giftings and the blessings of the word of God. When it says in Psalms 84, 11, that if I walk right, there's no good thing he will hold for me. That's if I walk up right. So over here in the book of um, uh, in the book of Romans, Paul gets into this discussion about when I obeyed the law, it brought forth sin. You know, he said that over in the book of Colossians chapter 6, you think about it, you know, his conversion, uh, a, a believer's conversion from the dead to the law uh, is a result that we may be able to live and serve in the newness of Christ. Now, when we talk about serving in the newness of Christ, we want to take that same uh, word of God. We want to look at something here. Um, let's go over to the book of uh, Romans. Let's stay in Romans. But in the book of Romans, let's go over to um, let's go over to the uh, six and four, and let's look at six and four. I'm gonna go over there with you, over in six and four. Let's look at something in six and four. Six and four says um, in the book of uh, Romans, and it says over in this particular six and four. Let's look at this closely right here for a second here, and it says in the process of Romans six and four. And I want to look at this real good before I actually rattle it off here. Therefore, now we are buried with him through his baptism into his death. Now, the same thing we read in the book of Colossians. Now, it indicates once we come to our belief conversion, and it was comes to that Romans 10, 8, 9, by confession, and we confess the word of God, that not only that we believe in him, but we also want to follow the rules and regulations of the kingdom, as the word of God says in Psalms 1. I become blessed through the word of God, according to the book of Proverbs uh, 10 and 22, by obeying the word of God. If I walk right, walking right, and Psalms makes it very clear in Psalms 1, blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of the sinner, but seat in the, not, but, but seat not in the seat of the scornful, but his delight should be in the law of the Lord. 
And he says, of the law does he meditate day and night. That means Joshua, in Joshua 1 and 8, said we shall meditate as men kingdom representatives and how we should present ourselves before God as being what we call mimics to have other people who believe and understand that they can also walk in the newness of Christ as well, even though it may be hard at some things we do, but we still got to believe and declare that in the midst of our transgressions and sins and all our past uh, deeds that we have done that made us unsuitable for a proper walk in the kingdom of God. Now that Christ died on the cross here, we talk about the resurrection here just about a week ago, not even a week ago, Sunday, and how Christ had died on the cross for the remission of all our sins that we now we give him homage. We look to him and we understand when we look to him, we pray daily as it says over in the book of Matthew uh, chapter 6, that we go into our secret place, we go into our secret place, we pray, and we pray to him who already knows the things we need in secret, then he begins to reward us openly. But we got to follow the rules and regulations of the kingdom of God. Paul's whole discussion here in this area of verse 6, but now we are delivered from the law and been dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in the newness of spirit and not in the oldness of law. He comes down here in the area of the uh, particular seventh verse. I want to look at this again in a different version of scripture as the Lord of God brings uh, this particular message to you. Not only the AMPC, but I'm going to look at it in the, what we call the Message Bible. Because when I look at the MSG, it brings me a little bit more clarity and understanding how the word of God makes it plain and simple than when he speaks to me. So when he says to me over here in the area, as I said before, over here in the area of, uh, uh, the, uh, excuse me, uh, Romans uh, chapter 7, and looking at Romans chapter 7 and around that particular 8th uh, verse, let's look at the 7th verse in the Message Bible. He says something like this in that particular 7th verse. But I can hear you say, if the law cold was dead as well, that it is not better to sin itself. Now, listen to what he's saying it. But I can hear you say, if the law cold, you know, you hear these police officers rattling out different codes, you know, and they talk about these 187s and different things. These are things that brought uh, death against the flesh when it's committed. There was names and codes given to that particular act. You know, 187, you know, all these things you hear about. Some of these rapper guys talk about. But the word of God says right here, but if the law code as bad as well, I say that we are not but better than sin itself. Now, I want you to understand the second part. If the law code was as bad as all, uh, all, uh, that is no better than sin itself. The Bible say that certainly is not true. The law code had proficiently legitimate function, which it did in the body of Christ. And it kept you from going out doing something you weren't supposed to be doing or unlegitimately creating an act or crime. Then when you've done it, there was a place that said, hey, look, you can't, you can't compete a, a, you know, a death, kill, murder, or steal, or whatever it may have been that you've done that wasn't right to the law. And it says, without this, it is clear guidance of the right and wrong. Moral behavior would mostly, what, guesswork. You see, apart from this, what, the sentence of the surgeon of command, that you should not convert, that's, you know, covet, you know, you know you're not to convert, that you could have the dressing of the covetousness upon looking like a virtue or ruins by a life uh, with with it. Now, now, I want to make sure I get this really understood for the point of those who are listening to this particular 7th verse as I go back and understand the particular 6th verse in the King James Version. But now, as but as we are delivered from the law, remember there's a code in place saying that there are functions in the law that we must still abide by, but we're not of the law, we're of the spirit. But even though we walk in the land of the laws, we still have to sow the laws that we are actually spiritual people. When the word of God say, Our Father who in heaven, how that be thy name, kingdom come, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we're walking in the act of saying 
that even though there's a law in the land, but we got favor and spiritual behavior as kingdom citizens right here on earth. Because it's not that we disobey the law of the land, but we do obey the law from the kingdom that we may walk therein with the newness of a spirit in a way that God said we no longer walk to where we was when we was in the law of the letter. Now, because, you know, when you'll find out about these things, you say, wow, you know, that means I'm born in the sin and I got to obey the laws of a land which is governed in sin. But at the point of being a person of the spirit, I have favor knowing that if I walk right in the laws of the land, I'm still being behaving as a kingdom citizen and been obedient to that which has government over me. So I got to make sure that I do obey the laws of the land. And if there's something that forbids that we see sometime that happens to us, and then the word of God say, we have to turn it over to Jesus. We got to let the word of God work out its own soul and salvation. And that's a problem for a lot of us because a lot of us still carry that get back spirit. And, and, it's, and it's in every one of us. You know, when someone do us wrong, we have to get back at them. Well, Galatians talks about that also. First, he talks about in Galatians chapter 5 and the 14th verse, it talks about the laws of the kingdom. It's all based on love, which Jesus taught over in the book of uh, John uh, chapter 13 and that 34th verse. But he also comes back and understands about the process in Galatians 5 and 15, about the kick scratching and devouring your brother and sister, and how we should really understand that when we go and we should pray for those, or pray for those who despitefully use us. And there are people going to come at us. But we've been tested on a daily basis as being kingdom representatives. Now, when you look at the seventh verse of Romans chapter 7 and 7, he said, What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I have not known sin, but by the law. For I have not known, lest except the law has said, Thou shalt not covet. Now, we're going to look at that seven verse a little closer. Because the seven verse talks about the process of a logical understanding as me and you as women of God have to obey the laws of the land, but we're not of the laws of the land. Does that make sense? We're separate, but we do have to obey it because it has dominion and supremacy over us as long as we're here. The Bible said, uh, being here, uh, being here, in this rest of this particular chapter, Paul uses uh, this particular personal experience as an um, instructional guidance uh, to be free from the laws of sin. Now, also, the code of law keeps us from committing and doing things that's not right with Christ either. But the law of the kingdom, basic law, is L-O-V-E. That's the number one law in the kingdom is, is love. And so he comes in this particular eight verse. He said, but sin taketh occasion by the commandments worth in me in all manners of, look, of, of concepts. For without the law, sin was dead. Now, you got to really understand what he's saying right there. When you look at that particular eight verse, and he says another opportunity uh, in this particular scripture. And when I go over to what we call the message Bible, you look at the eight verse. He said, but sin found opportunity in which it does. The reason sin, sin excuse me, finds opportunity in our life because we're in a world of sin. Well, we can commit and do things that really oppose the will and the purpose of what Christ wants to be because it's constantly in our face everywhere we go. So mercy and grace is always with us in case we do slip and fall. But our efforts as we go through the process of 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight, we got to make a thorough examination of how we are walking as man and woman of God to receive the righteous blessings from Christ that we may shine in the midst of where we are, even though we might have all the physical things that most people of the land have that make them look good. The reason the word of God say, you know, what is a man to gain the world and then lose his soul? But God said, you're more richer in heaven and walking in the guidance of the kingdom than the laws of the land, which you will lose your soul. And I hear Dr. Jesse Perez say that all the time out there at Victory Outreach. You know, every soul's got to get in one size holes. But I got to make sure I'm walking right. 
whenever God comes to bring me home, I got to make sure I'm going to receive the opportunity to go into the kingdom of God. Not only that, I have been extended an opportunity to live a longer life. You know, as I live a longer life with health and strength, this is what God declared for me. He said, I will give you 70 times 70, not only just the process of 70, but then beyond your 70 years, which is what we call the grace and the mercy that he bestows upon us that when we're in our old age. Look at this particular area of the uh, eighth verse in Romans uh, 7 and 8 once again. But sin findeth the opportunity in the commandments to express itself, which it does all the time. You know, the opportunity of sin is always there before us. Ephesians said we indulge in it, but God said, according to the Ephesians uh, 2 and 4, he has freed us from it, that even was in those sins, that he no longer holds them against us. But as long as we continue to try to walk right, in Psalms 84, 11, the Bible says, according to Proverbs 10 and 22, there's nothing I would hold from you because now you're pleasing and you're desirable to me. Now I will give you the good of the land. Listen to what he says in the book of uh, uh, Romans chapter 7 and the 8th verse. But sin find an opportunity and the commandment to express itself got a hold on me. And it did. It got a hold on me, you, and everybody else. And arose and smote it all kinds of forbidden desires, lust, com, you know, covetousness, all these things. For without the law, sin is dead. Listen to what he says. In the sense of an, in an active and of a lifeness of things, you know, sin has always given us an opportunity um, to make ourselves uh, available to it. When we're not walking in the newness and uh, what we call the um, the uh, uh, convergence of Christ, according to what it says in the book of Romans, chapter 10, 8, 9, he makes it clear, saith thou, the word of God, near the end of mouth, confession, believing that God raises something of that. That's where my news is going to come in at. I go back to Psalms 1. Now i got to understand if I'm blessed and I'm walking in the righteousness of Christ, I know there's nothing he holds for me because the word of God tells me every word, Isaiah 55, 11, that proceeds out of the mouth of God goes forth and it does not come back void, but it is accomplishing word. So what I have to do is blaze my life trail behind the opportunities for Christ shows me on a daily basis that I may receive those things that Christ has always given me. Man, woman, God, it's a blessing to be with you here on my actually uh, uh, midnight cry. I know I got to get kind of late. Uh, we're going to kind of pick this up again a little bit on tomorrow, but we do have the man of God, Bryant Pritchett, uh, out of Oklahoma, and it's going to be on our BTR station. For those who want to uh, look into that and be a part of that program tomorrow, go to my actually Facebook channel. It's going to be Ellis Charles, and you're going to see the information there. You won't have to go through the process of trying to uh, log in. Just hit that link. And if you're going to come in by link, that's fine. If you come in by a call, that is just as good. So we thank you guys for joining us on our Midnight Cry here tonight here at HNLC Studios. And we pray that you guys will continue to sleep well. And hopefully we bring some enlightenment to your heart and your mind during the course of time of this short study here at HNLC Studios. God bless you guys.